why I chose general surgery. I never got it what you had to go. I guess this world's too slow for you. Bruh. I think there's beauty in the gray, the cold, but you just want the gold. And there's no way I can beat it, cause I got no chance, no chance when it comes to her. She got the glitter and the fame, and I, I just wasn't enough. I could not sleep in for crap this morning, so there's that. Look how exhausted I look. I also put on a bunch of these pimple patches last night because I felt like I had a billion whiteheads. There's definitely one underground here that's about to mess me up when it finally comes up. What's going on? I feel like overall my skin's been doing so well, but maybe it senses me feeling more stressed about residency interviews coming up or something. Unclear. Good morning. I did not intend to wake up this early, but here we are. I woke up at 4, like, 05 a.m. and I could not fall back asleep. And I tried. Like, I usually can fall back asleep. I'm not one of those people who can't. But God had a different plan for me today. So instead of laying around, I'm just gonna get up and get my day started. And then when I'm exhausted later, which I will be, I will take a nap. It's been forever since I vlogged. Hi, hello, thank you for being here. If you're new, I'm Melody, I'm a fourth year med student, which means I'm applying to residency right now. I'll be interviewing basically for the next three months. And yeah, here we are. How did we get here? I'm not sure. As I mentioned in my last video, the one where I just sat down with you guys and caught you up, it was like my first upload in a while. The past few months have been absolutely crazy. As a result, I really haven't had much time to like work out, do things for myself, do things I enjoy, make content. It's just been crazy, you know? Now that I'm like moving into interview season, I've basically wrapped up all my crazy required time intense elective. All of those things are kind of done or on their way to being done. I have been like taking back my time, trying to get back and to all of those things. But the one I'm like really struggling with getting back into is exercise, but we move. If there's anything that the past few months have shown me when I was doing like sub internships, basically acting like an intern, trying to take on the role of intern, staying in the hospital really long hours, auditioning essentially for general surgery. It's that I'm gonna have to do some serious work in trying to maintain at least some of my hobbies during residency. I don't think I fully appreciated the flexibility that even a med student allows you because you can just go home. You know, when you're a resident, you can't just go home. And like, it's not like I was out here just like leaving my rotations without any concern. Med students definitely spend long hours in the hospital, but it is not the same. When you are a resident, it is your job. You do not leave until things are done or until there's someone to relieve you. So I think my sub eye kind of taught me that because I try to stay as late as the interns, carry the entire list, do as many of the interny things as I could while still reaping the benefits of being a med student and getting in the OR a ton. So so yeah, the next few months are really about getting back to me, getting back into the things I love doing, making time for myself, cooking more. Lord knows I was not cooking, I was like too busy to cook. Setting up some good habits so that I can try to take them with me into residency, but you know, it might be challenging. My last haircut, I also got these bangs. I like them a lot, but they're just difficult to pull back. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. I'm gonna stay back here because if I get any closer, you're gonna see my eye bags and I don't want you to see them. They're horrendous. That kind of day. But I can't lie, lie, lie. LA made you crazy, crazy, yeah, yeah. I hate setting things up like that. Like, I want to be aesthetic, but I'm not aesthetic. I'm just not aesthetic. Anyway, just got back from the gym. It was pretty good. We went. And that's a win. A win is a win. Third year med school really tried me. Like, it had... It had hands. I was really out here just being a med student. But it's okay because fourth year, even though I'm starting to get stressed, I think these pimples are stressed about my upcoming interview, which is in like four days. I feel good, I have more time, and I'm trying to make the most of that time. Time to shower because I do have an ER shift, my last one of this rotation. Third year of medical school was really, really challenging for me, and so much so that I really think I was depressed at the time. You know, for the latter half of third year, I didn't really vlog, I didn't really come on YouTube very much. 
and honestly like across all of my social media platforms I really wasn't as active and to be honest I knew I was sad I knew that I was having not doubts about medicine but just feeling really unsure of everything I knew I was experiencing these emotions but I didn't really appreciate how much I was really feeling those things so I very quickly made a video on TikTok talking about how I didn't realize puns how I didn't realize I was sad until I was no longer sad anymore or like I didn't realize the extent to which I was sad and not myself until all of that kind of lifted away and I started feeling really good again and at first glance I was like oh I'm feeling better because I have more time for myself but I don't think it's actually that simple I think I started feeling better when I was in a better environment when I felt like I was able to recenter myself on my goals and when like yes now I do have way more time for myself than I did I think it's just a little bit more complicated than just having more time so this is not a fully articulated thought I still have to reflect on this a lot but I wanted to come on here and at least share that on here too because I think it's very easy to look at a vlog and think like that is the full story and while I try my best to always chat with you guys during the vlog I try to keep it real you know especially on TikTok and Instagram where I'm recording throughout the day just popping in to say hello etc etc I know for me one of the reasons that I don't always share is because one I'm not in the mood to create when I'm not feeling well or not feeling like myself and two I don't want to impose my stuff onto someone else like I don't want to burden my community with what I'm going through and probably in the same vein I don't want to discourage anyone from going into medicine or going into surgery or going into the things they want to do and love and whatever whatever they're excited about especially because I know I have a younger following on here as well so I don't always jump on here when I'm sad or depressed I also refuse to be on the internet like super vulnerable and crying like that's just not me but I wanted to be honest and at least talk to a little bit with you guys about the fact that third year was really hard because I think it's really easy to feel like you are alone and I definitely felt super super alone when I was going through it during third year. As part of my final, I have to complete a few of these like ultrasound modules online. They seem pretty interesting. Like it looks very like clinically oriented. So we'll see how it goes. Still so much to do, but need to go to the ER. So I'm gonna go do that. You don't care what's real no more. No, you don't want me anymore. You only want what you can afford. I I just got home from my last ultrasound shift. It was awesome. It was a pretty chill day. Saw one patient, did two different types of scans, had some coffee, returned some of the course materials and devices, and now I am home wrapping up all the things I need to to get this rotation done with. That often happens at the end of a rotation. I guess I shouldn't call this a rotation elective. At the end of whatever course you're on in med school, you often have a lot of things you need to submit, so that's what I'm doing. One of the patients we saw had abdominal pain and more specifically left-sided abdominal pain. So we did a focus assessment with sonography for trauma exam or a fast scan, just to kind of get used to looking at the abdomen all over the abdomen for, you know, free fluid, et cetera, et cetera, even though that's not what we were suspecting this patient had. And then we ended up doing some renal scans as well. The patient had a CT scan, which showed a kidney stone, but we could not identify the kidney stone on ultrasound, so. I'm still working on my ultrasound skills, but it's been great. I saw the kidney, so that's great. While I was in the ED, I actually got a residency interview invite, which I'm super excited about. The interview invites came out kind of in a big bunch on the 26th, so I got the majority of my interviews on that day, but a few have trickled in since, and today I got one that I was really hoping to get because I did an away rotation there. So I'm super excited, and I'm feeling like I'm in a pretty good position to match, you know? but. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, because who knows anything can happen. But it's all about finding a good fit now and, and being yourself and bringing your whole self to the interview and checking out these programs and seeing which ones you like as well. So I'm gonna finish my work really, really quickly. And then at some point we'll talk about why I chose general surgery. Good morning. It's actually the next day I messed up because there were a few assignments I had to turn in and one of those assignments required that I go back through the medical records of all of the patients that I saw over the course of the month and filled out all these forms talking about what scans I did on them and um, that process was a little bit more labor intensive than I thought it was going to be. But we're here now. We are up. I have a little space eater so I hope the sound wasn't too bad for the last couple of minutes. There are a few things I need to do. One of those things is that I actually need to pack because I'm going to to 
Argentina for a wedding, which is a lot of fun. And I'm waiting for my mom to come because she has my blazer, which I'm gonna need since my first med school, not med school interview, oh my God. My first residency interview is this weekend. So in a few short days. So we've got things to do. I've eaten about six bowls of Oreo cereal. Have you had those? They're so good. This is my shirt. I stole it from my sister. Thank you. Let's uh, get my life together a little, shall we? Punts, get away from the camera. We're alive, people, we're alive. Today was an interesting day. I showered, I promise. Today's November 1st, I have not done any sort of reset. I told myself I would, but I will actually attempt that tomorrow morning. Now I wanted to kind of close out my vlog by talking about why I chose general surgery. I think deciding what kind of doctor you're gonna be is probably one of the most important decisions you make during medical school. And quite frankly, you don't have a lot of data to support your decision. I know, I know that seems like, I don't know if that's taboo to say, but it's the reality. You are a medical student, you have very limited exposure to every specialty even if you do it for a month even if you're you know shadowing as much as you can which is why I recommend you shadow as much as you can but it really is very limited exposure and so deciding on a specialty is something that often you just have like a gut feeling about it I chose general surgery for a couple of reasons I went to medical school thinking I was gonna be a surgeon I have wanted to be a surgeon for as long as I can remember I have another video where I kind of talk about my journey to medicine how I came to you know decide I want to be a doctor and like the things that went into me applying to med school in the first place but I really did come kind of knowing I wanted to be a surgeon and I remember that I think the AAMC sends you a survey before you start med school asking you to list your three specialties of interest I think I put orthopedic surgery surgery and emergency medicine that being said you can't really make a big decision on just a hunch so I think there are other things that also go into the decision I loved most of my rotations I would argue I loved almost all of them and to be honest Honest, the ones I didn't love as much were in large part not loved as much because of the teams I happen to be working on and I think that's also a huge part of medical school that people don't talk about enough your experience of a specialty of a specific rotation depends so much on what team you get assigned who you happen to be working with from the attending to the residents your intern your environment largely dictates how you feel about things and so like I said I was really lucky most of my rotations I was working with awesome people I think at the end of the day it came down to the fact that I could not imagine a a career in medicine where I would never operate again, where I would never be in the operating room. I've said this before. I truly love taking care of surgical patients, bringing someone to the OR, but also working through an issue with a patient preoperatively, if surgery is even a good fit or something good to offer, whether something should instead be medically managed, conducting a risk benefit analysis in cases where things are more complicated. I loved all of that, all of that about surgery. And I found myself wanting to study surgery more. It was just something that I really enjoyed doing. Doing. It's my little secret, but you know, recently I started like picking up surgery textbooks again and kind of doing a little bit of review and trying to study. I'm doing that because I love surgery and I want to be a really good surgeon. It's not about being better than other people. I'm not getting graded. It's just about wanting to do a good job and finding something that I really love. And I think that's surgery for me. There were multiple times where I was in the operating room. We opened up a patient's abdomen. I'm looking down at the patient's small intestine. We're like running the bowel and I sometimes like come back into my body and realize like holy crap I am looking at parts of this person that they have never seen before there is something so intimate about that and so incredibly unnatural like I am a 27 year old person looking at someone's intestines you know and helping heal them like that is insane that is awesome and so having moments like that in the operating room and realizing how much I loved that was also a huge part of deciding. I also love anatomy. I think some anatomy is more lovable than others. Head and neck, not for me. Bones and muscles, not for me. Which is why I didn't go into, you know, ENT and orthopedic surgery. But the abdomen, the thorax, heart, the lungs, the intestines, all of the organs, incredible. And I, I wish I did know the human body like the back of my hand. And I hope that one day I get to that point. Perhaps one of my favorite things about my surgery rotation was the ability to offer for patients a very tangible solution to whatever problem they had. A patient comes in with abdominal pain, you find out they have appendicitis, you take out their appendix. A patient comes in with pain over here, you find out they have 
cholecystitis, you take out their gallbladder. The patient comes in with a cecal mass, you take out the mass, you find out that they had early stage colon cancer. You know, whatever it is, whatever it is, you offer a very physical and like tangible solution. And I think that's awesome. I also think that's one of the challenges of surgery, the fact that there isn't always a solution that you can offer. And I think some of my most difficult cases on my surgery rotations, both as a third year medical student and as a sub intern, were the cases where the surgical team had nothing to offer. It can be heartbreaking in cases of terminal disease. It can be challenging for patients to accept. It is challenging for the team to accept. You know, surgeons want to operate. They want to make their patients feel better. All of those things ultimately led me to surgery. I guess something that I talk about a little bit less, but also explains my love for surgery in many ways, is that I come from a very blue collar household. My sister is a sheet metal worker. My dad was a crane operator. My stepdad and various members of my family work in construction. I spent my summers as part of a program for city kids, going up to the middle of nowhere, New York, and working on a farm, stacking hay in a barn. And, you know, despite coming from a very blue collar home, I have chosen a path that is so different from the rest of my family. I was the first in my family to go to college. I graduated from Harvard. I'm the first in my family to go to medical school. I'm a few months away from graduating as a freaking doctor, which is mind blowing to me. I've chosen such a different path and this might sound really corny, but sometimes in the operating room, when I'm thinking about how I'm fixing a patient or helping to fix, because I'm not really fixing the patient yet, I'm just a medical student. When I'm doing those things, I often think about my family and I often feel closest to them. I think some of the other parts of medicine make me feel totally different from everything that they do and so far from, from them in many ways. But using my hands in that way and trying to perfect something and craft something in that way, it makes me feel connected to them. And I was talking to my dad actually recently about when he was a crane operator and how he used to fix train tracks and he would find a segment of track that needed to be removed and he would you know, identify that and they would remove the track and then replace it with new track. And I told him, it sounds a lot like surgery. And he goes, yeah, I guess so. It's like I was a surgeon of the train tracks but really like it really did it sounded like you know a bowel resection there's also that bit the working with my hands brings me a sense of calm it makes me feel grounded it makes me feel connected to my roots my origin story in many ways and yet it is so far from where I grew up and it is so beyond my parents you know wildest expectations for me there's just something truly incredible about that so yeah I want to be a surgeon for all of those reasons. And if you couple that with the fact that surgery was historically male dominated, there are very few Latina surgeons and that I also really feel responsible for positioning myself to serve community and be an advocate for others like me in the future. Um, all of those things really made surgery the best fit for me. I hope that answers the question of why I chose surgery. I'm sure there are things I'm leaving out. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in a comment. I'd be happy to answer them. And yeah, I think surgery is a wonderful field. I'm excited to join. And I truly hope and with my first general surgery residency interview in just a few days, I look forward to seeing you know where I'm headed and what the future has in store for me. With that, I'm gonna drink my tea, which is now stupid. It's been steeping for quite a while. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read a book and head to bed. But it was wonderful chatting with you. And let's do it again sometime. We're just getting started, baby. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. And uh, I will talk to you guys real soon. Fun. Goodbye. Good night.